afternoon, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us for our finance and GE session. We're excited to share with you all a little bit about GE and the role that we as the finance team play here at GE. As a housekeeping item, I just want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to sign into the event. So please use the QR code on your screen to do so. I'll start off by introducing myself and then I'll hand it over to our fantastic speakers in Boston, Bridget and Eric, and then we'll wrap with the Q&A. For our Q&A session, please be sure to put your questions in the chat and then also be sure to like that the ones that you want to hear our speakers answer. With that, I'll introduce myself. Um, my name is Natalie Bettemore. I'm a supply chain finance manager here at GE Renewables um, based in New York City. I've been at GE for three and a half years and I graduated from our Power Up and P program and I'll tell you a little bit about that in just a minute. I'm also a graduate of the University of Maryland and I studied finance and supply chain management. So shout out to any Terps that might be on the call. With that, I'm gonna hand it over to two of my very favorite people, Bridget Tobin, who is a director of investor relations and Eric Fitzpatrick, who's a finance ex executive and CFO analyst at corporate. With that, I'll hand it over to you guys in Boston. Hey everyone. Yeah, we had our masks on here at Boston to show we're socially <laughs> distanced. Bridget had the BC mask. Of course, yep. Um, so I'll, I'll kick it off here. Um, with with kind of an introduction of myself and then I'll hand it over to Bridget. I, I was also I am also a graduate of our financial management program at uh, the GE Energy business. So uh, precursor to our current power and renewable businesses. You know, and I'd say that the thing that that stood up for me and and it really sold me on FMP was the experience I got in our supply chain at manufacturing sites, doing plant finance, in commercial finance, running deal models on on um, for our wind business on, on new deals that we we're bidding for. And then also in financial planning and analysis, seeing the broader perspective of the company and, and how we how we drive value for investors. Um, you know, so it was just a phenomenal opportunity those two years for me in, in the financial management program. You know, since, since then, um, after FMP, I, I spent five years on our audit staff or a little over five years on our audit staff. Um, first as an associate for two years, and then as an audit manager and senior manager, you'll see in the, in the kind of the middle there for two years. It's a cross those those first few years on audit staff. Spent a lot of time in our in our big equipment businesses, subsea drilling, um, gas power, and, and aviation. Kind of looking at how how we sell big ticket equipment, how that drives value for the company, and how the services models connected to that and, you know had, had a significant degree of opportunity uh, we view cor corporate audit staff as a leadership acceleration program um, to where not only auditing financials but also supporting on acquisitions and dispositions had an opportunity to look at risk functions um, and, and how we set risk policies and risk tolerance policies in our businesses and then also look at, at kind of new big investments we were making, how we were standing those up and the policies and controls around them. So got to see kind of a broader set of, of kind of how we do business. Finally, culminating with my, my last year in audit staff was promoted to an executive and, and oversaw the implementation of new revenue recognition standard for the company, oversaw investigations and compliance for the company, and then also our corporate balance sheet with things like pension, and I'd say some complex financial instruments that sit at, at the top of the house which was a phenomenal opportunity. And, and then essentially the last year or the last couple of years I've been at uh, corporate here supporting our CFO and our vice president of financial planning analysis on another uh, on a number of company projects and items, things like finance priorities for the company. Um, I'd say enterprise risk has been a big focus area for us too, and then also supporting our board of directors. You know, and then, and then just outside of that to address the personal, uh, University of Michigan grad, um, really kind of hoping Big Ten football comes back this year. We'll see. <laughs> um, and then uh, I, I have a wife, Alex, who I actually met on audit staff. Uh, we met in Aberdeen. And uh, and then uh, one daughter, Sophia, with uh, with a second kid on the way uh, early March here. So, uh, so pretty pumped there. I guess with that, I'll hand it over to Bridget. Great. Thanks, Eric. Uh, thrilled to be here with Eric and Natalie. I have the pleasure of working with both of them. Um, I have a couple of more boxes on my page than Eric had. Um, I have been with the company since I graduated from college. So I um, graduated from BC, go Eagles, um, with a degree in mathematics. I joined the company similar to Natalie and Eric on the FMP program at GE Plastics. 
So again, similar to, um, to how the program kind of mixes up different experiences in different locations, I had the opportunity to work in commercial finance, collecting receivables from our petrochemicals customers, on the plant doing a fixed asset inventory in specialty chemicals. I lived in West Virginia, Western Mass, and then my two years culminated in Dublin, Ireland, where I was able to go over to Dublin in our super abrasives business and really learn how you operate overseas. You know, what the cultural differences are. At the time, it was pre-Euro, so we had the Irish Lira um, and the pound, sorry, the Italian Lira, the Irish pound. And it was a great experience to kind of take myself out of Boston. Um, and from there, I would say my career, I've been able to, been very fortunate to have worked on the industrial side of the company. Um, I did not do corporate audit staff like Eric did, so I knew I needed to differentiate myself. So I actually stayed overseas. I became MF of a small manufacturing facility in the Netherlands, working for one of the industrial businesses where I got a great wing-to-wing -wing exposure on what it's like to be a CFO and what it's like to be CFO in a different country, which has a whole set of cultural learnings that come along with it. And again, the first third of my career, I spent in the industrial businesses, um, in the balance sheet, understanding how these businesses are run. I was then very fortunate to go and work in our Fairfield headquarters, where I did three different roles, really understanding how the whole company gets stitched together. We are a massive organization of different products in many, many different countries. And so to see how the financial planning and analysis, to see to Eric's point how the balance sheet came together was really um, invaluable for the rest of my career. So I was really fortunate to have been there, to have seen the, uh, through the company through the eyes of the CEO, the CFO, help with the annual report. From there, I spent about three years in our financial services business at GCAS. I was the FPNA leader there, so really focused on how does this business unit come together? And I was there during the great financial crisis from 08, 09, 10, when we were conserving cash and at the same time trying to find a way to support our customers. So to Eric's point around being in deal reviews and understanding how the investments are made, I had a bird's eye view of that because I was doing the analysis and I was helping the CFO and challenging them as they were working through that period of a downturn, quite frankly, for that business. From there, I had the great opportunity to go and live in Hong Kong, China for four years as the company really flipped itself on its side and we created a challenge function to help the company grow faster globally. So I was charged with how are we gonna measure this new organization? So you think about like a startup, in a 125 year old company is not easy. So there was a lot of how do you make the business case? How do you me measure that business? And then how do you share and communicate what the output is? Fantastic four years um, supporting the company outside. From there, I came, I was actually um, in investor relations. This is my second tour of duty in this shop. It's an amazing opportunity. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Between, you know, in this, it's funny because I've had three children. Um, I'm a mom of three boys that are six and younger. And at the every time I have a child, I've changed jobs. And so I said to our CFO at one point, I'm like, whenever I want a new job, I'm just gonna have another baby. And so I've been really fortunate. Again, when you think about working moms and keeping your career going and challenging yourself, the company has never shied away from taking me smack dab out of maternity leave and putting me in a new job. So within this kind of really tumultuous personal period of amazing growth for our family, I've been able to help the company from a horizontal perspective, bring the FP&A shared services team together, generating over $10 million of savings for the company, 600 person team doing things, standard work. And then I also had the opportunity um, to work in investor relations where I sit today. It is a very interesting time to be an IR for GE. I'm happy to answer any questions. We are going through a tremendous period of transformation for the company, and I am here helping the company communicate that. And it's really a two-way seat. What are the investors telling us, and how does that inform what we communicate? And then how do Larry, Carolina, and the team want to package up the great work that we're doing? So like I mentioned, um, three children, my husband, John, um, we're both BC grads. We ironically met on a blind date set up by a GE uh, colleague. And it's, you know, a great career. I stay here for the people, and I'm sure we'll talk more about that as the course goes on.
So as we think about the next page, and I touched upon a little bit about, but why why is GE Finance so important? Why 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 have I been here for 23 years? And it really comes down to um, partnering and being a partner with the operating leaders really getting a strong fundamental foundation in the business and financial acumen, and then having the extracurriculars around community and development. And if I just think about my own experiences, you know, partnering with operating leaders, I think here, and I talked a little bit about my experience overseas in GGO, but if I go right back to my first job off program, and I think about being a, you know, 24 year old woman, in a manufacturing plant in the Netherlands. I really got to sit down with our operating leaders and our sales leaders and work on how are we gonna make this business grow? And I had a seat at the table helping establish what the margin thresholds were for our products. And then the sales team would actually go and implement price increases. I helped restructure the manufacturing facility. I put together what the long-term plan was gonna be for that business with everyone sitting side by side. That is how the roles in finance work. We have the ability to ask great questions, to challenge the teams with data, and to be, have a seat at the table as they're making strategic decisions. And that happens at different points in different ways, but you'll get a flavor for that in almost every role that you're in. From a business and a financial acumen perspective, I think here um, where when I was at GCAS and you think about when you're immersed in something, when we were immersed in the great financial crisis, I had never worked in a financial service organization. So very quickly, I had to come up to speed on what was ending net investment. How do you think about return on assets, return on investment? I was a math major, so I have learned a lot of finance on the job here at GE. And you, the best way to learn is by being in those situations and being inquisitive. Everyone here at the company has a lot of time for asking questions and having dialogue. So you keep on asking the questions, you're immersed in these, you're, you're not a fly on the wall. You, your work you're doing is incredibly invaluable to what the task at hand is. And so being kind of in that role allows you to increase that business and financial acumen. And then community and development, just from my perspective, I'm very heavily involved in women in finance. I'm very heavily involved in the women's network. I have been incredibly fortunate to have the career that I've had. It comes through blood, sweat, and kind of that work ec equity, but it also comes with being strategic about managing your network. And these extracurricular programs allow me to stay connected with people like Natalie that I've worked with that I haven't seen all the time and then get connected with new people. So we're really fortunate within GE to have an incredibly tight finance network that sometimes expands beyond finance. But I know that right now in my role, if an investor calls me, I can pick up the phone to almost every business in every region and I will know someone. That helps things work faster and work smoother. So I'm very grateful for kind of that community and that development, not to mention the continuous development that GE invests in all of us. I've been incredibly fortunate to have gone to Crotonville, to have done executive training courses that took me to China and to Saudi Arabia, incredible experiences that are in addition to what I'm getting on the job. An amazing, amazing, three amazing reasons to think about GE Finance. I'll turn it back over to you. Yeah, and it, maybe the one thing I'd add here that I think you, you hit up front and, and it just really stands out for me about GE and the finance function here is, if you come to GE through the financial management program, day one, you will have an impact on operations. I remember my first rotation in the financial management program was in a in our Bentley Controls business in uh, outside of uh, Lake Tahoe in, in Nevada. And, um, you know, I, I was maybe three weeks into the role. And at the time, the finance manager for the business came it came in and said, hey, look, we, we're leaking money on CM, on, on our margin. And we, we really aren't, aren't sure why. We haven't decomped it, decomped cost of quality in the right way. So I then spent the next kind of month and a half looking into cost of quality at the site, building new processes to track it, and identified, hey, we have a real issue with concessions, customer concession, concessions, and we don't have the appropriate delegation to track the sales team when they give away customer concessions. By the end of the rotate, by the end of the six months that I was there, had implemented a new process that ultimately kind of went on to save the business a few million dollars a year. And this was, I mean, two months out of school. You know, it's you have a an opportunity in every job you take 
immediately to impact operations and to drive value for the company. Um, you know, and that's just kind of one tactical example early on, but like it, it, the opportunities only grow as you kind of stay in the company and, and get larger and larger as you go. So it, it, to me, there just aren't many other jobs out of school where you have that type of opportunity. Um, it, it really kind of stands out that, you know, that partnership with the operating leaders. It, I, I think that flips over here real nicely to uh, to the next page, which which is a, a little bit of what is corporate finance. You know, so we we've talked, uh, Bridget and I have talked a little bit about some of the jobs that we've we've had, but want to just put it on one page for everyone to say, you know, what are the types of opportunities you would have if you come here? You know, and I'll take a few of these and, and kind of concentrate on the top half of the page, but. Also, uh, you know, there's there's an area for you guys to submit questions, so feel free to ask us any any other questions about this or you know any any other question you have on the company as as we go. You know, so we, we've talked a little bit about financial planning and analysis, which is the first bucket you see there, FP&A. So at, at its core, FP&A is interpreting and explaining financial performance, you know, which seems maybe a little bit high level at first, but then when you really get into it, financial planning and analysis is the partner to the GM and to the CFO of a business. And you are the person often who is overseeing things like, do we need to set different targets or a different set of strategic targets for each of our sub-businesses? And how do we set those targets and measure them appropriately against those? You're also often the one in financial planning and analysis that's overseeing restructuring. So if we need to take a large set of costs out or if we need to rethink the organizational structure of a business, you know, that often comes back to you, know, you. You are seeing the financial performance and the restructuring executed through that in FP&A and overseeing that, which is just a big, big, um, big responsibility for that role. So it comes to, you know, not only explaining the results, but also then how do you help translate those for your operating leader so that they can take action, whether it's target setting, rethink organizational structure, or rethinking kind of the, the priorities and the strategy for the business so that they can, they can better take action and better run the business, which is, is one of the cool parts about FP&A. The next thing is is commercial finance here, and, and you know this is really customer enablement and growth. It, it goes from everything of like setting a deal strike zone for your commercial team. So you know what is the pricing accountability that we want to give to our commercial team, um, and, and what are the kind of the base margin rates that we want to set on each new new deal. To things like when I was an FMP in wind, we were running the financial models for new deals bid by the by the sales team. Is you're supporting the actual financial models that are that you're building the financial models that that are um, that are used to actually bid on a new project, and these are you know billion to billion dollar win projects, which are pretty cool. Uh, and, and you know and the last thing is you know I'd say every job on this page is tied into cash, and in commercials very important because ultimately you have to collect cash from the customer. You know, so you are are kind of overseeing collections, past dues, and, and how you ultimately get cash back from the customer. You know, I, and I'd say maybe just to tackle a third one here in the interest of time, be supply chain and services, because that's really a, a core job that you'll find, especially immediately on an FMP in the company. And supply chain and services are really important because you kind of have the top line with commercial, but then it's, okay, how do we go deliver for a customer? And, and this is where it kind of comes to your supply chain and services roles. And it's it's a few things. It's how do we set the right cost handbooks and, and the right targets for our manufacturing sites in terms of delivering at margin? And how do we track them to that? So looking at things like overhead cost liquidation and, and how we manage inventory and LIFO or FIFO on inventory. It's also things like working capital management. You know, how do we understand the sales and operations planning processes so that we have the right working capital to support our, to support our commercial needs and doing forecasting to support that and how, what, uh, what levels of inventory that we should build up. And then the last big thing here is just capital spending. You know, one of the, the biggest areas of spend for the company is capital expenditures, which is essentially new equipment in our manufacturing facilities, build out of manufacturing facilities to support the growth of our businesses, and then and then really kind of management of those. And, and that's really a big piece of where you get into from a supply chain standpoint, um, from supply chain finance standpoint. A anything else you'd add there, Bridget? The only thing I would add is when you think about all of these as building blocks, you know, for those of you that, ha that have aspirations to become a CFO, or to become a GM at some point, finance and the uh, everything that's on this page are something that you have to understand if you're running a business. So you think about how are you funded? What is the risk? 
the controls that you operate under. So you have the opportunity within GE Finance to get exposure to all of those. And I think that's really kind of special and unique. Yeah, definitely. And Natalie will hit it on the next page here too, but you know, your opportunity to have a two-year two year job where you rotate amongst these rotations really gives you that broader perspective like Bridget mentioned. Yeah. Um, okay, and with that, I'll talk a little bit about the financial management program. So FMP, as you've heard, is a two-year rotational program. You'll rotate four times within the different finance functions and then also different parts of the business. So for example, I was a power FMP. I did three rotations in power and then was lucky enough to go to corporate and do an investor relations role. Um, you know, I think from a, you know, from someone who was graduating, I had no idea what I wanted to do in finance. And from my perspective, you know, FMP kind of allowed me to continue learning and then also kind of allowed me to see different parts of finance. Um, and that was what really drew me to the program. Um, you know, in terms of development, I think Bridget touched on it a little bit. The people at GE are, you know, largely the reason a lot of us are here, right? They're always trying to coach and mentor you and make sure you're learning what you need to learn. So on FMP, that's just, you know, magnified, if anything. So definitely a great program for that. You'll take leadership courses at Crotonville, and you'll also take technical courses, um, both online and in person. And, you know, from a community perspective, I would say FMP is just one of our leadership programs. So we have other leadership programs, you know, Edison, OMLP. And, you know, even if you're at a site where there's no other FMPs, you always have those other leadership programs to leverage. So out of college, that's a, a really great program to make sure that you still have friends when you're moving to cities that you might not necess necessarily know people at. So that's a little bit about FMP. Um, I want to leave some time for questions. So we can go over to the next slide. I'll turn it back to you, Bridget and Eric. You guys have managed FMPs and you've hired FMPs. I guess, what would you guys say you're looking for when you're going after FMP candidates? The two biggest things for me is, and you see it on the bottom, bottom of the page here, is you need someone that's a problem solver that is willing to kind of roll up their sleeves and, and, and get deep into an issue. And look, this is kind of comes back to my initial point, which is, you're expected to contribute and drive our operations from the day you get here. You know, there aren't really any training wheels here. Like you, you will have an impact on the company yeah. from the day you start. Um, you, know, so you, you need people that are willing to essentially get deep into things. You know, the second piece at the bottom of the page there is essentially the leadership. You know, financial management program, over 75% of the executive group within GE comes from FMP. This is a program that we look to build the leaders of the future for GE, the finance leaders of the future through FMP. Um, you know, so, you know, we're looking for people that want to continue to invest in themselves and continue to grow. If we're going to make that investment in you, and I yeah. would just say, you know, as I've as I've recruited at BC, and you look through the resumes, you know, you think about what are the attributes of the function today. And Eric, you articulated problem solvers, people that you know, have been leaders on campus, you know, you've been the leader of the women's network group, or you play a varsity sport, you have the ability to manage, you know, your academics and something else. And, and I think it's this level of curiosity and commitment. So if you think about what have you done within your time at university? Have you been committed to something? Are you are you asking good questions? Because it's really all about the building blocks. Like we're not looking for someone that has done a supply chain job at an industrial manufacturing plant. We're looking for someone that wants to do it and has the right. building blocks to do that. And I think that's what's exciting about when you get the resume stack because you look for the potential within those resumes. And you can find it in these, you can find it in people that have gone abroad, you can find it in people that have started an organization on campus, people that have put themselves through school. There's all different ways that that matriculates and manifests itself. And it's so exciting to get those resumes. So we're looking forward to getting all of yours. <laughs> <laughs> and actually that, that's a great transition to the next couple pages here, and then we'll, we'll open it up for Q and A. So essentially, you know, you'll see the next three pages kind of outline, what are the opportunities that we have? You know, and I'd kind of split it into two. Essentially you have your internships and your co-ops. So if you are a sophomore or a junior in college right now, we have summer internships um, and, and co-ops that go with us throughout the fall if, if you're able to do that that essentially provide you the opportunity to kind of get a taste of what, what FMP is like. Um, you, know, so you are essentially an FMP, you're doing it for 10 to 12 weeks, 
Um, and you're doing the same things that FMP would. You're at a plant, you're at a, at a GE business, you're engaged on a project that is expected to deliver some, some concrete outcome by the end of that FMP. And then the, the latter thing you see here is essentially then full FMP. So for, for those seniors, you know, after you graduate, we have the financial management program. And for certain others that are, are not in the U.S. direct entry level positions, where, where you're essentially coming in and you are on that two year program that Natalie described. You know, the, the thing I would say here is you know, both for FMP and the interns in terms of what we are looking for, and I think, I think Bridget hit this well, is, you know, essentially we want people who are curious who want to grow, who want to continue to invest in themselves, who are self-starters, you know, that, that's essentially kind of what we look for across. And, you know, we, we also expect you to come into our, the interviews knowing a little bit about GE too. Um, so we expect you to come to the company's website, read an annual report, listen to an investor relations yeah. call, you know, understand a little bit about the company that you're coming into and what you're interested in and why you think you're a good fit for the program. And Absolutely. I, I, are we are we going to segue into questions now? Is that? I think that's yeah. the plan, right? So I think so. Eric, yeah. You kind of touched on one of the questions that came in was if you were in our shoes applying for FMP, what would you recommend when preparing? So if you do you want to build on kind of the way you ended a little bit or? Yeah, you know, I, I would say first and foremost, I'm looking for someone who is who, who understands the company and understands what they're getting into. You know, so you, you want you go onto the website, you you look at what the FMP program summary and what FMP is all about. You know, you, you understand that you need to be flexible over FMP, flexible to move into different roles, have four six month rotations flexible to be able to go to different locations and, and then also understand the company that you're coming into, like the, the businesses, what we do, the value we deliver, um, you know, that, that's a big part of it. You know, I'd say when I, if I kind of recall back to, to my university time, you know, one of the common questions that, that you get and that I even ask, ask folks as they interview is, you know, what business are you most interested in? Why, you know, what, why does, why does that speak to you? Because, you know, we have businesses that do a lot. We, power the world, help heal the world and help transport, you know, and and I think you should have a connection to one of those because that it speaks to our values as a company to a certain extent. Yeah, no, I, and the only thing I would add is in addition to all the prep about the company, you know, obviously prepare about yourself. And, yeah. you know, what I always try to, when I did resume critiquing down at, at BC is, what are the five things that you as a candidate want to get across to us in the interview? And then as you think about those five things, weave them into your answers. And at the end, if you haven't covered one of them, it's okay to kind of say, hey, listen, I, can I tell you about this experience that I've had? So prepare yourself about the company, but then prepare yourself about you. What are the five selling points? And then make sure you kind of weave in those unique experiences um, as you execute the, uh, the interview. Great. Um I think we have a little bit of time to run over, so I'll ask a few more questions. Um, Bridget, I'll ask you this question. What have you found most rewarding over your career, you know, with GE and, and with the roles that you've taken? So um, I am so fortunate to, to have worked at this company. I think I would say the things that I have found the most rewarding and I'll save the best for last, which is people, is first the global experience. I mean, never mm -hmm. in my life, a girl from Boston that went to BC would have imagined visiting close to 60 countries throughout my career, having lived in four different countries, having my son in Hong Kong, like the experiences that I've gotten globally and having an appreciation of what it means to be a global citizen is, and I think the, the, the breath of GE allowed for that. I think that for me, I think about some of those operational experiences. I'll never forget what it was like when I was on a training course going to Saudi Arabia as a woman in an abaya, and this was in 2015, and walking into a place of business as the first woman that had ever been in that business. We were kind of ambassadors and we were part of this and, and there was no woman's bathroom. And I'm like, I am like witnessing history as the as the markets open up and as women break through and now Saudi women can can drive and so it's amazing to see the progression and the leadership of women within the company you know now we have a woman CFO our second one after Jamie Miller 
It's been amazing to be a witness to that. And then it comes down to the people. There is nothing like the team that we're on, the team that challenges you, yet listens to you. And we have a ton of fun. Like I'm here in the office for the first time in six months and I walked in and it was like my heart got bigger because I was seeing the team in person. And these are people that you end up becoming family. And I think that, again, I I'm only have ever worked here, but I think that is something very special about GE. Yeah, maybe the one thing I would add to that, and, and it hits on your first point, is the, the work we do matters. Yeah. You know, and, and you, you feel it every day. Um, you know, I, I think back to when my last year on audit staff, I, um, as part of that, that year, I, I got the chance to go over to Iraq, to Baghdad, and spend some time at our power unit there. We're executing and, and continue to execute pretty significant project relative to upgrading the country's grid and, and a couple of the power plants um, outside of the city and, and went to Baghdad East. And it was this significant project with eight, eight gas turbines to bring power to a city that was suffering blackouts. It, and mm -hmm. we were a part of the solution to help deliver power. You know, so we were over there and you you can feel the work or you see the output of the work you're doing and you are not just a finance person kind of sitting on your computer back office or stuck in an office somewhere like you were actually at the site helping deliver the solution um you know and there, there are very few jobs out, out of college that you know I, I found outside of ge that really offered that kind of experience where you can say like hey look i was connected to helping deliver this solution for a customer um this billion dollar project like you know and, and it, that's just pretty cool and even on fmp i was helping run the deal the bid models for big wind farms that we were we were bidding on in, in China, which was which was a phenomenal experience, and this was a year and a half out of out of school. So, um, you know that that really uh, you make a real difference in the work that you do here. Yeah, I'm going to shift gears a little bit. We have a question from a student in UConn. Fitz, I'm going to give this one to you because you've done a little bit of a lot of it of auditing. Um, so the question is, I'm an accounting major at UConn, which the school pushes public accounting very hard. What are the benefits of starting at GE's FMP program? And you can talk about CAST a little bit as well over Big Four Audit. Yeah, so you look, I'd say through audit staff, you do get some audit experience. For us, it's different though. You know, for me, if, if I compare us versus public audit, it, it really is a question of where do you want to be 10 years into your career? You know, if you go the public audit route, you're essentially, you're kind of looking at that route as a long-term career commitment, or you want to move into some type of technical controllership function. You know, for me, yeah. I, I was always more of someone who was interested in operations, interested in how do you run the place? How do you how do you run the manufacturing facility? How do you run from a commercial, or how do you kind of run and set the commercial strike zone? And, and those were the things that were more fascinating for me. Um, you know, so if, if I think about, 10 year career over the course of GE relative to public audit, you know, 10 years in, you know, as Bridget's uh, career timeline demonstrated, and I think as mine demonstrated, you know, you could be the finance leader of a manufacturing plant or of a small business. You can be the FP&A leader of a larger business and helping partnered with the GM and actually running that business. Um, you know, yeah. so I think it, it's a question of, you know, where do you want to be? The, the thing that was always attractive to me and and why I kind of looked at FMP over, over financial services, over consulting, over public auditing, was I, I wanted to be the one who was making the decisions and helping drive business results. I didn't want to be the person who was making a fancy pitch page or selling an idea. I, I wanted to be the one executing. <laughs> um, and, and look, that that's still what attract is attractive to me on this is you know we are the ones delivering results and executing. You know, it, I look at my peers that graduated uh, audit staff. You know, one is our OTR lead, our delivery leader for gas power right now, and, and overseeing the financial execution of multiple billion-dollar-plus projects. You know, th there are very few opportunities you'll get in your career where you know you can be ten years in and you can be overseeing a project portfolio of you know ten billion-dollar-plus projects. So or ten billion-dollars-plus of, of projects that you're delivering, which I, I think is just pretty attractive. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I guess kind of some more tactical questions. People want to know what businesses we have openings in and for those businesses, where are they located? You know, where have you guys traveled with GE and what's that been like? 
I mean, right now the business is always dynamic. So, you know, we have, you know, if you think about our industrial businesses and financial services, we've got power portfolio, renewables, healthcare, um, aviation. aviation. We've got some financial services down in Connecticut and the headquarters in Boston. You'll find that the locations will vary by business, but in power, it would be in Atlanta, Schenectady, upstate New York, upstate New York. Milwaukee. healthcare would be in the Milwaukee, Chicago area. Aviation is Cincinnati, and then um, renewables would be upper state New York, and then they're headquartered out of Paris. So, and yep. then there's smaller kind of tier two cities, but I would say those are the geographic areas. Plus, we've got some opportunities here in Boston as people kind of rotate in from the other programs. Yeah. And Bridget talked a little bit about where she had lived internationally. I had also gotten the opportunity to to travel pretty extensively internationally and, and live abroad, although for a shorter period of time while in audit staff. You know, in audit staff, you're essentially in a place for four months at a time. Um, you know, I was in a variety of locations across the U.S., from the oil fields of West Texas to uh, San Francisco with our digital business. I uh, spent some time over in Paris, in Aberdeen, in, in um, Scotland, which is was the previous headquarters of our uh, subsea um, oil and gas business. Uh, you know, I got to spend some time over the Middle East, in Dubai, in China, in Beijing, um, with our steam power business. I'm trying to, there are a number, oh, in Switzerland uh, on an acquisition. I mean, pr pretty much all around, similar to Bridget. I mean, it, you can pick a country. <laughs> I mean, I remember traveling yeah. in in Ireland and like seeing a, a GE sign, you know, that you, when, when you think about the opportunities, again, the company is a living, breathing organism. So kind of a, some of the locations like West Virginia or Aberdeen are no longer part of the portfolio, but new um, cities have come in. So everything is kind of on our website. If you have questions, feel free to kind of email, email out to the team and then ask as you're interviewing on local campuses, they'll have more information uh, for you there too. Great. Okay, I think, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. We're running a little bit over, but just wanted to thank you both for the time. And if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. All our information is available on our university website. So thanks again, guys, for joining, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for thank your interest. You.